Good evening, everybody. Live and direct from House Onik in Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a brand new edition and brand new look to everything we've been doing here. This is our brand new astronomy blog. It's called Skyblog 3 and a good opportunity for you to catch up with what's going on astronomically related in the Mid-South area. We'll talk a little bit more about conditions expected into the rest of the evening tonight for stargazing. We'll also talk a little bit more about what you might be able to see as we get into the overnight hours. Not that much over night usually just right after sunset is a good time to get that and we're starting to come up on sunset right now a couple of good viewing opportunities for satellites tonight and a couple of good opportunities in the next few days for a few more things going on we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit below me on directly below me here the email address if you have any questions or concerns or ideas that you might like to uh, pass along that we could feature here for you please let us know again great place to do that here is my email address austin.onic at w com Beneath me in that window between there and the red bar that has all the solar data, sunrise, sunset information, and day length as we go into tomorrow. What you're looking at just directly beneath me is a current live view of what's called meteor radar, sending out radio waves into the atmosphere and bouncing them back when the uh, video or the audio stream actually hits something. And what you're looking at is actually seen, uh, let's take a look a little bit closer up. This is the live stream video right here and again what you're looking at is showing uh, the radar data coming on through and this is showing again uh, time stream scrolling on down to the area here uh, that we're looking at on screen. Let me see if I can zoom in on that just a little bit closer for you. What we're seeing again at this time is again every time you see one of those uh, bright lines on screen crossing on down there's one right in the middle uh, going on through. That could be a meteor slamming into the atmosphere, burning up, and those radio waves bounce off the trail of the leftover debris, the gas, the dust, everything else that was up there, uh, leaving behind a trail of ionized gas. And that does a very good job of reflecting radio waves down to the ground so we can actually listen to radio waves being bounced back from the uh, meteors hitting the atmosphere. This picks up a lot more during meteor showers, but you can hear them every once in a while. If you like to hear this and hear what it sounds like, all you have to do is just scroll to Live Meteors, the website down there on the bottom section of your screen. So able to hear at least a little bit of that, and you may be able to, not too sure if the sound is coming through or not. I'm going to go ahead and mute that on screen just to make certain I'm not driving everybody crazy for there. But we do have that opportunity available, and again, we'll just keep that scrolling down there. Uh, when we see something, we'll point it out to you. There's a couple of minor echoes showing up, but otherwise not doing too bad. Mars weather, taking a look at the Mars Environmental Station on the Curiosity rover, showing again an air temperature of 23 degrees for a high, 103 the low temperature into uh, early yesterday, uh, let's see, with, well, two days ago in the morning. So we did manage to see at least a little bit of some warmer temperatures out there. Not doing too bad out there for Mars. If you'd like to see more about this, go to mars.nasa.gov uh, for more information. You'll be able to hear at least a little bit more about uh, what goes on out there. So definitely good idea to check that out and get more information about what that sounds like out there. So good opportunity to see more about what's going on on another planet out across the area. Sunrise and sunset data again for today. Sunrise at 631. Sunset tonight occurring just as we speak at about 7.21 p.m. and picking up uh, 12 hours, 59 minutes worth of daylight time. International Space Station is currently over Australia. And as we go into around the uh, next couple of orbits, we're going to be able to see the space station coming up at about 8 o'clock tonight, just after that, way up around the northern horizon, rising in the northwest. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. You can track a lot of these things, uh, different types of satellites from N, the number 2, Y-O.com, and then clicking on whatever satellite you would like to track on there to see where it is. Amateur radio, great, great place to get information like that uh, to see what's flying overhead in the next few days and hours. A uh, great opportunity to see more of there, but a good opportunity to see more 
about where these particular satellites are. And this comes in really handy if you're an amateur radio operator, so something to think about there. We do have, again, sunset occurring. As of right now, the view from heavens hyphen above is showing the sun well back on over to around the horizon. Mercury, a little bit too close to be able to see that there. Mars should be visible just above the sun if there's not enough clouds out there, and that's going to be between Aries and Taurus. Orion should be up there as well. Uh, Jupiter looking pretty good as well. Uh, the full moon, the just past full moon, will not be rising until just after about maybe an hour or so after sunset for tonight. Uh, Jupiter will be over on the far uh, western horizon. That'll be rising within the course of the next couple of hours in Virgo. So we should see that kicking up uh, relatively soon. Let's go ahead and take that out just about a little bit farther at this time so we can see a little bit more about uh, what's going on. We'll go to about 9.22 this evening and see what we can see out there. Assuming, again, skies are clear, Mars will be just on the west-northwestern horizon, uh, very close to Aldebaran in the area around Taurus. Orion will be sinking into around the southwestern horizon, uh, looking very nice tonight, again, assuming no clouds, and then the moon Moon will be rising right about the time Jupiter has risen just above that by about an hour or two, and that'll be rising again a little bit later on. Should be a gorgeous uh, just past full moon for later on tonight, so you should be able to see a little bit more there. Let's go ahead and take this all the way out to uh, close to around uh, midnight and see what else we can see. Just before midnight or so, moon continuing to rise, Jupiter uh, heading toward mid-sky, and Orion and Sirius in Canis Major starting to set over on the southwest horizon. We do have a couple of good satellite views to take a look at. The first one will be occurring in a little bit less than half an hour or so. Uh, that'll be the International Space Station. It'll be rising in the northwest at about 757, making its way across the sky around the north. Uh, horizon just below the uh, North Star and then going over to the northeast. So again, it'll be starting uh, across the sky from northwest just between the horizon and the North Star. That'll be seen again uh, going through about the area about just about 8 o'clock or so. That'll be when you should be able uh, to see that. And then finally fading uh, about the time it hits the northeastern eastern horizon uh, right about the constellation of Booties, the Shepherd. So should be a good view of that. Now that's Pass number one. Pass number two will be coming up on the next orbit, about 90 minutes later, but you're really going to have to concentrate to see this one. This one will be available right about 9.30, just after that. 9.33 is when it rises over the horizon, and it goes to about 9.36. So it goes. It takes a little bit of time to go between rising over the horizon and heading up to around uh, the area close to Auriga through Perseus. Now this is going to be very bright, but as soon as it gets very bright, it's going to fade away very quickly. This is going to be just a, a very quick pass as it'll enter into the Earth's shadow very quickly right after that. So that's two passes of the International Space Station. First one just past 8 o'clock, next one coming up at just about 9.30. You also have the possibility of seeing the Chinese Space Station. That'll be taking place at almost exactly the same time that the Space Station is rising, but Here's the thing, it's going to be a lot dimmer. Uh, it's not going to be quite as bright. It doesn't have quite as many solar panels catching uh, the sunlight out there, and there are more than a few clouds out toward the northern horizon tonight, so doubtful you're going to be able to see everything on that, but you should be able to see it going across the sky from northwest back over toward northeast, and that'll be again rising just after the International Space Station rises on uh, orbit number one. You might even, if you squint a little bit, be able to see uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. That will be rising in the southwest, very close to and just below the bright star Sirius out there. That'll be around 814, and then going over to around the area close to Jupiter as we get into and around the area of 820 for this evening. So that could be something you might be able to see, but again, that one is going to be very, very dim, so you're really going to have to look very carefully to uh, be able to see that one. So hopefully you'll be able to see something there. Iridium flares, none really to speak of at this point in time, so uh, nothing showing up in that. We'll talk more about those coming up tomorrow. There is a couple of passes in the next couple of days, but not much of anything going on directly at this point. You can find out more by going to Heavens Above. You can go to Heavens hyphens above.com slash main. Uh, more information again about that on the solar eclipse coming up, about all these other space stations and satellites uh, out across the that will be flying overhead. 
so a good opportunity to see more. Uh, Iridium Flares, it's a network of satellites that was owned by the Iridium Communications Company that went bankrupt several years ago. The satellites are still up there, and when they rotate, the sunlight strikes at one of the panels, bounces off quite nicely, and we're able to see this thing get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and then fade back away again very quickly. The next one coming up will be uh, Friday at about 8.04 in the evening, one on April 15th on Saturday, and one coming Coming up on Tuesday the 18th, at least visible here in the Mid-South. What I've been showing you here and what we've been looking at that will be visible from the point of view of Memphis. If you're uh, dialing in from somewhere else, what you need to do is go to the website. Again, go to heavens-above.com and then change your location wherever you're going to be. This one, again, is centered for me uh, where I sit at News Channel 3. And you can see, again, the coordinates right there of 35 degrees north, 90 degrees west and the time frame that it takes for us to uh, show you this information. Great opportunity, again, to see more uh, on this, if at all possible, and a great way to keep up to date with what's flying overhead so you can tell what that bright uh, object was up in the sky. So something to think about to try this website out to try to find out more. Cassini is coming close to the end of its mission. It's about 280,000 miles away uh, from Saturn at this point, about as far away as the Earth is from the Moon. It's going to be ending its mission here in in the course of just the next uh, couple of weeks or uh, months or so anyway. End of mission is going to be uh, September 15th, about a month after our um, big uh, solar eclipse coming up. So five months, two days, 11 hours, and 39 minutes until Cassini's mission is done. They're going to plunge it into Saturn so that it doesn't have a chance of bringing any Earth germs with it to any of the moons of Saturn out there, and that'll keep it relatively on the safe side. So if you'd like to know more, you can visit the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, information at saturn.jpl.nasa.gov. Great opportunity to learn more. This is going to be a spectacular finish. This has been an amazing mission, absolutely incredible. So if you'd like to know more about what this is all about, there's tons of information available about what was discovered, what it all means, what we're still studying. The graphics, the pictures of this thing has been just absolutely amazing to take a look at. It's just I mean, unbelievable to get uh, that close to, again, what we have seen uh, from this planet. It's been flying around there for the last few years. Uh, it's an amazing way to take a look and see at what is available out there. One of the coolest things, sorry, i got some mosquitoes flying around here at this point. If you take a look at um, Saturn's atmosphere, especially at the North Pole and also at the South Pole, you see that the cloud structure is actually hexagonal. It's actually straight lines, six of them, and you're able to see more about what this looks like on the website. This is just mind-boggling when it comes to looking at exometeorology about how straight lines can set up in a planet's atmosphere like this, especially one that is much, much bigger than what the planet Earth is all about. So if you'd like to see more about this, great opportunity to learn more. Uh, tons of information available from NASA on this at, again, saturn.jpl.nasa.gov. It's going to be a spectacular finish. Really looking forward to this, so stay tuned. We'll have more updates on this over the next few days and weeks. More information available from my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonic WREG3. And of course, we'll be posting more about this on WREG.com slash weather especially when we have a ton of information to talk about where it comes to all sorts of neat things going on out there. This is, again, our initial broadcast. We're going to be doing a lot more of these in the near future, so if you'd like to know more about this or about anything involving astronomy out across the Mid-South, we'll be bringing you much more information on this as more as we uh, possibly can. If you're a group out there that would like to get information posted, you have a website or anything else like that, please let me know. I better go ahead and wrap this up because I'm starting to get attacked by mosquitoes out here in the backyard of House Onyx for tonight. So, live and direct from House Onik, a meteorologist Austin Onik, with our initial offering of our astronomy blog called Skyblog 3. If you'd like to know more, stick around our social media pages and we'll have a lot more for you as well as news, weather, and sports with News Channel 3 on air and online. From House Onik, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of Skyblog 3. And remember, whatever you do, especially when it comes to science or astronomy, keep looking up.